Hey friends, what's up? I hope you're doing great. I'm Dr. Pawan, your surgery educator on an academy platform and today we are going to talk about the weak leak within surgery part 6. So let's begin. The first question which we have for today is, uh, there is a 28 year old asymptomatic white woman uh, who incidentally found to have a 3.5 cm hypervascular lesion with a central scar on the right lobe of her liver. Okay, on delayed images, like on the CT scan, there is an increased uptake of the contrast material in the scar in the in comparison to the surrounding parenchyma. Now, she is otherwise healthy and takes no medications, liver enzymes, the alpha fetoprotein levels are absolutely normal. What is the most appropriate management of this particular patient? So, what do you think is the diagnosis and what is the next management of this particular patient? So, let us summarize it again. There is a 28-year-old female no medications no positive history the patient has a kind of a incidental finding of a liver lesion which is hypervascular lesion and the characteristic thing is there is a central stellate scar so a liver lesion with the central stellate scar the diagnosis is focal nodular hyperplasia okay so how will you manage a patient of a focal nodular hyperplasia you will have to go for an observation so what is that kind of a answer in this particular question we will have to go for an observation now let us have a look at the images for the focal nodule hyperplasia so here you are basically seeing the radiological radiological images and then you also have a gross image so i hope you're able to appreciate in the gross image also they can show you this gross image in the gross image also you know that this is kind of a lesion which is present in the liver and in the center of it i hope you're able to appreciate this central stellate scar so this is kind of a characteristic of a focal nodule hyperplasia now let us summarize what are the CCT findings of the important lesions in the liver. Now this is important. So what are the CCT findings of the important lesions of the liver? So we have hemangioma which is the most common incidental finding of the liver. If you do a CCT in this particular patient like in a patient who is having hemangioma what will you get? You will get something which is called as a centripetal enhancement. Okay. So what you will get is a centripetal enhancement. This is what you will get in the patients of a uh, hemangioma. What will you get in the patients of a hepatocellular carcinoma? If at all you perform a CCT in the patients of a hepatocellular carcinoma, you will get an early washout of the contrast. It means that in the arterial phase, yes, definitely that lesion will take up the contrast, but in the venous phase, the lesion will kind of get rid of the contrast. Like you will not get a hyper intense lesion in the venous phase. On the other hand, in the hemangioma, even in the venous phase, in, even in the venous phase, the lesion will continue to take up the contrast, and that is why it is called as a centripetal enhancement. Now, what about the focal nodule hyperplasia? Now, very very important, which you need to understand is that there is a scar tissue we just saw. That scar it doesn't take up contrast in the arterial phase. So, very very important in the arterial phase, no contrast take up. But in the delayed phase, that is in the venous phase that particular kind of a scar takes up the contrast and it enhances up so this is a characteristic feature which you get in the patients of a focal nodule hyperplasia now if you look at this particular question even here you see that there is an increased uptake of the contrast medium uh, in the scar in comparison to the surrounding liver parenchyma okay in the delayed images there is an increased uptake of a contrast material in the scar now this is something which is an additional point which you may remember so if at all you perform a cct in the patients of a focal nodular hyperplasia you will get an increased uptake of the contrast in the scar in the delayed phase okay right so this is about the focal nodular hyperplasia now let us move on and let us talk about the next question so yeah there is an 88 year old male patient presented to you uh, with an kind of a end stage renal disease with a coronary artery block and the metastasis to the lungs so you know quite a lot of conditions are present in this particular patient now the patient presents to you with an acute cholecystitis right so patient is uh, patient's relative are wanting for some of the other treatment what will you do like you need to do something right so what will you do in this particular patient so here if you evaluate the kind of a scenario here you have a 88 year comorbid patient with so many other diseases and the patient is coming to you with an acute cholecystitis now most probably the patient is suffering from a a calculus cholecystitis okay so most probably the patient is suffering from an a calculus cholecystitis you need to do something well the ideal treatment would be let's go for a cholecystectomy that would be the ideal treatment can you go for that well no not really because the patient is having an end stage renal disease patient is having a coronary artery block patient is having metastasis to the lungs all these factors will not allow for you to 
put the patient under anesthesia will not allow you to you know go for a cholecystectomy but you have to do something why do you want to do something because over a period of time what will happen the gallbladder will get distended like more and more and a point will come when the wall of the gallbladder will not receive any further blood supply this particular acute cholecystitis will land up into like a necrosis the wall of the gallbladder will become necrotic okay and might even rupture even in the later period of time so that is why we have to do something what we can do at least we can go for something which is called as a tube cholecystostomy so what will you do in this particular patient you will go for a tube cholecystostomy now our final aim is that the gallbladder should not get distended so we cannot remove it because the patient is having comorbidity we cannot put the anesthesia but we can definitely put a u like a tube inside the gallbladder under the usd guidance so i hope you are able to appreciate in this particular image you have a tube which you have put inside the gallbladder under the usd guidance so this will help you in draining the gallbladder and ultimately it will help you in kind of reducing the complication of necrosis and the perforation of the gallbladder so this is how you will manage a patient of an kind of a a calculus cholecystitis if it is occurring in a very very old patient with a lots and lots of comorbidities okay so this is about um, like this particular question moving on to the next question so there is a case with a retrocecal appendicitis now this is important there is a retrocecal appendicitis now what which, which movement will aggravate the pain now this is basically trying to ask you how can you elicit that this particular patient is having a retrocecal appendix so please understand this you will have in extension okay so pain will be elicited in the extension now this is important because the normal findings which you get in the patients of an appendicitis are abdominal pain and the tenderness and localized tenderness and the localized scarring this is what you get in the patients of an acute appendicitis but let's say the patient is having a retrocecal appendix that is the appendix is present behind the cecum what is going to happen even if you palpate the abdomen of the patient you will not get the muscle rigidity and the tenderness you will not get that but if at all you perform a soas test in which you basically hyper extend the leg of the particular patient like of this particular patient what is going to happen you will have exacerbation of the pain on the hip extension okay on the hip extension that is a soas test so you will get positive kind of a pain in the patients in uh, by performing a soas test if at all there is a retrocecal appendix now what are the other ectopic positions of these appendix which can happen so let's say the patient like the patient has a appendix which is present in the subsecal or the pelvic position so if at all you have a subsecal or the pelvic position of the appendix again you will not have any tenderness on the abdominal palpation but what you will have you will have features that patient is having let's say the pain in the vagina or the pain in the rectum and sometimes patients can also come to you with a urinary complaints because the appendix is present in the pelvis it can irritate the urinary bladder and the patients can come to you with a urinary complaints lastly let's say if the appendix is in very very close uh, you know relation to the ileum so either the appendix is let's say the pre ileal or a post ileal if at all this is a condition you might like the patient might come to you with a vomiting and the diarrhea so these are the three kind of positions where even if the patient is having an appendicitis the main presenting feature of the patient is not the pain at the mcbernie's point not the localized tenderness not the localized guarding we just saw each of these particular condition will have a different kind of presentation okay so this is something which you need to understand not a kind of a routine okay now lastly a pretty simple question so by performing the maneuver which has been shown in this particular figure if the bleeding from the liver does not stop so the bleeding sources so there is a maneuver which has been shown to you so what is this particular maneuver guys so you know in the last uh, kind of a weekly quiz we discussed about the cattle brack maneuver and the metox maneuver and that time i told you that we will discuss about the pringles maneuver later on so well guys this is what is a pringles maneuver now what is a pringles maneuver i'll tell you so what you do in the pringles maneuver is that let's say there is a liver uh, just follow this particular image which is there on the slide so there is a liver and then there is the second part of the duodenum so there is a kind of a ligament which kind of attaches from the liver to the second part of the duodenum we call it as a hepatico duodenal ligament okay nothing great about it we call it as a hepatico duodenal ligament what is a constituent like what runs in this particular hepatico duodenal ligament so we have a portal tract so what is this portal tract consisting of it consists of hepatic artery then uh, okay it consists of the hepatic artery then portal vein and the bile duct so this is what is a portal tract consisting of 
now uh okay now first let's discuss what are the blood vessels which are associated with the liver so well majority of the blood supply of the liver the blood which is coming to the liver it is brought by the portal vein so around 70 percent of the blood supply of the liver is met with the portal vein rest around 25 to 30 percent is met by the hepatic artery so the portal vein and the hepatic artery are the two main vessels which are bringing the blood to the liver and what is the vessel which is taking the blood away from the liver mainly it is being taken taken back by the hepatic vein so these are the three vessels which are in associated association with the liver if at all there is a liver trauma the bleeding source will be one of these three vessels now whenever you are performing like operating on the patients of a liver trauma you need to have an understanding what is the source of this particular bleed but how to come to know so we can come to know what is the source of the bleeding from the liver by performing the Springles manual so what you do in the Springles manual is that you go and you basically compress the hepatic duodenal ligament so if you compress the hepatic duodenal ligament what is going to happen the portal triad is going to get compressed so what is the constituent of a portal triad the portal vein and the hepatic artery if at all if at all the source of the bleeding is let's say a portal vein or hepatic artery and you are compressing the hepatic duodenal ligament what should happen the bleeding should stop so that is what you need to understand over here. So let's say if at all you perform a Pringles manual and the bleeding stops, it means that the source of the blood is either the hepatic artery or the portal vein. But if at all, even after performing a Pringles manual, the bleeding continues. Okay, even after performing a Pringles manual, the bleeding continues. It basically tells you that the source of the blood is hepatic vein okay so this is what is a pringles manual it is very very important it's an absolutely must concept i'm sure around 80 percent of you must be knowing this but yeah i just wanted to emphasize on this particular concept and that is why i've covered this in in this particular question i hope you got this pringles manual compress the hepatic duodenal ligament if at all the bleeding stops the source of the blood is either hepatic vein or the port hepatic artery or the portal vein or if at all the bleeding continues, the ble bleeding doesn't stop, the source of the bleeding is the hepatic vein. Okay, so these were the four MCQs which I wish to discuss with you guys today. Thank you so much for listening to me. Right now, I just want to tell you about this foundation batch course for the NEED 2021, which is which has already started on the platform. Now, I will be taking up general surgery in this particular batch course and I'll be taking up the entire general surgery in 99 hours. So, you know, all the aspects of the general surgery will be dealt by me in this particular 99 hours and it will surely, surely be beneficial if at all, let's say you are a final year student or if at all you are preparing for a NEET 2021. So, do consider having a look at it. My classes are going to start from 21st May. So, if at all you wish to attend it live, you can just go on my page and have a look at the schedule. At the same time, in the month of May, I have launched around 15 free special classes for you guys. If you want to check, you can just check the video. I have made a very, very short video around three to four minutes in which I've described the schedule of all these particular 15 classes. But yeah, we practically have a classes each day from 7th to 20th. So, okay, so we have a classes each day from 7th to 20th and the timing is basically 11 p.m. So if at all you wish to come and attend it, please do come and attend it. Okay, right. So thank you so much guys. Uh, I basically teach live on Academy. Obviously, you know that if at all you wish to join any of the courses on an Academy, please consider using my promo code that is tr.pavan. You will get around 10% discount on whatever subscription you take one month, three months, six months, whatever you take, you will get around 10% discount if at all you use this particular promo code. I really, really looking forward to connecting with you in the foundation batch guys if at all you are already an academy student please don't miss it it will definitely definitely be beneficial for you if at all you're not do consider i'll be more than happy to connect with you thank you so much guys it was indeed a pleasure i hope this particular video added some value to your life stay safe happy studying and see you next week see ya bye